Hello beautiful people of the internet, it's Izzy here and I am back with another video. Um, so today it's going to be a story time video for you guys because as you most, most of you know, I went to Covington, Georgia where they filmed Legacies, basically the original Mystic Falls. I just got back yesterday. Um, it was an amazing experience. Um, I got to meet a lot of new people, a lot of people that, you know, I originally wouldn't have been able to meet if it wasn't for this experience. So I'm just going to start off with how this came about and how I found out about this. I was on Twitter one day and um, someone had posted the poster for it and I didn't really think much of it. I was like, oh, there's no way I would be able to go. It's expensive. It would be expensive and stuff. And then I read deeper into it and it was a free event. Um, so really the only thing that I would have to pay for was the place that I stayed, food and drinks and everything of that nature. I asked for my mom. I convinced my mom to take me for my 21st birthday so she ended up paying for my... Um, place that we stayed in and that's pretty much it I paid for everything else basically by myself I had saved up for this experience and it was a great one and then we did that we got the Airbnb that we stayed at and we did some like shopping lists we got like food and everything like that and then when it, the time had come I had to figure out about school and everything and I have one class on Thursdays and that's the class that's the day that we left we left at like 4 30 in the morning on thursday october 10th which is the premiere day um so i figured out my classes i talked with my professor and she's like you know we can make this up later just go go whatever i was like okay perfect so that was all i had to do oh work i took off four days of work um i ended up getting five days of work because they didn't work me the day before that was settled that was easy my boss was like yeah no problem whatever and then the next thing we had to worry about was transportation and we ended up driving eight and a half hours to Covington, Georgia with five people in a car which was very difficult and very crowded but the experience was totally worth it. So we left October 10th at 4 o'clock in the morning and ended up getting there around 2.30 maybe around there, 2.30 in, in the afternoon. Um, the, the premiere didn't start until at least 7-ish, that's when, you know, the cast started coming out and everything, so we toured, we, we took a tour, um, I met some amazing extras, they were amazing, um, um, they were just wonderful, they were, um, really sweet, like, really sweet, like, guys, extras put a lot of work into the show, and I just wish, you know, they would get the credit that they deserve and, and everything, um, and then we took a tour around Covington. They showed us like Atlanta's house. They showed us Caroline's house. They showed us the Lockwood Mansion. They even showed us Bonnie's house and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and then after that, we really just walked around and saw the clock tower. We saw Mystic, the Mystic Grill. And then around six-ish maybe, we sat down in the spot and we watched a few episodes of Legacies that they were playing from season one on the big screen that they had. I'll put the picture of the big screen, what they had over here. Um, and then around a, like 7.45ish maybe, around that area, the cast came out. Um, so basically what happened was they were supposed to, the original people were supposed to be Lulu, um, Peyton, Nick, Matt, Quincy, Chris and Katie who plays Dana, Sam who plays Connor, and then there was one more I can't remember. Oh, Demetrius who plays Dorian. But then ended up Lulu couldn't come because of filming obligations. Ben oh Ben was supposed to be there too. Ben didn't come because of uh filming obligations and Sam did not come because of filming obligations. And then also Chris ended up not coming last minute and he was not there as well. So it was Peyton, Matt and then Jenny joined, took over Lulu's spot, I guess you could say. Quincy, Nick, Demetrius, and Katie. So they were there, and Peyton was there as also. Peyton was, um, Peyton ended up showing up later. Um, and they sat down, they asked questions. Jenny actually answered my questions. Uh, my question, which I asked her, um, which twin would feel more of a connection with Kai if he were to come back. Um, this is not my footage. I couldn't, I went live during this, um, the Q&A, and... I didn't save, but this is not my footage. I found this footage on Twitter 
for somebody. I'm pretty sure it wasn't the original person, but I'll put the footage right here, I guess, now. Um, I think initially I would say Lizzie, just because they have a lot in common. But also knowing how distrustful Lizzie is of new people, and just what happened with Joe, you know, what went down there. Maybe Josie would be a little bit more understanding of Kai. <laughs> Anyways, that was her answer, and she also really wants, um, you know, Josie and Lizzie to become heretics, mostly Lizzie probably, because she, you know, she talked about that all the time. Um, but they also answered a lot of questions, they, um, talked about, you know, this, the season two, and they also, um, handed out raffle tickets and raffle prizes for everybody. Um, I got the attention of Quincy a few times, and I got the attention of Nick, who plays Clark. Um, I didn't ask him anything about Legacies. I asked him about his show Tagged. I was like, you know, Nick, Tag season two. And he's like, I don't know, maybe in like 10 years. But that was also a very fun experience. Um, but after that, um, this lady got on the mic and asked anybody who was wearing Quincy's jacket, which I was at the time, asked anybody who was wearing Quincy's jacket to come up and sit in this, like, stand in this grass area. And I was like, oh my God. I'm gonna meet Quincy and my brother and my best friend they were calling out to Quincy they're like Quincy 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 it's her 21st birthday party this is her like present or whatever he's like you're 21 you're big one or whatever I can't remember what he says I was literally like starstruck because like he came over he gave me a hug he said happy birthday to me and then we took a picture my mom took a picture of us I'll put it right here and then I also took a selfie and I'll put it right here and then um we all got um, the, all the other people who were wearing his merch got a picture with him and I got another selfie with him and then we sat, we took a picture on his phone which he posted on his Instagram. You guys can go check that out or I'll put it right here if you guys want to see that right now as well. And then after that we went over and we started taking pictures of the Mystic Grill. There's like this neon sign that they had on the window. We took pictures of that and then I went back to where we were sitting because I was like, okay, the episode is about to start. It was like 10-15 minutes before the episode starts and I'll wait there. And then my brother called me, and he's like, you need to come over here. Julie Pleck is here. I was like, what? Julie Julie was not supposed to be there, so it was like a surprise or whatever. I had never ran so fast in my entire life. Guys, you gotta understand, Julie Pleck is one of the main reasons why I am in film school right now. I am the type of person, when I watch her shows, I don't look mostly at the relationships or you know like things of that nature I am the one who looks at the framework that she you know that the things happen in the show the way that you know she do makes the actors deliver and everything and she's just like one of my all-time you know mentors idols or whatever you want to call it like it was com I was completely starstruck like I literally when we went in we waited in line when I went up to her I was like you are literally the reason why I am in film school right now and she you know she asked me where I was going and what I wanted to do and, um, you know, we took a picture. I'll put the picture right here. She's literally one of the most down-to-earth people ever. And then she ended up, um, coming up and talking about, or she ended up coming in front of the crowd and talking about, you know, um, see, the it was the 10-year, I got the shirt, it was the 10-year anniversary of the Vampire Diaries when we were down there, so she ended up talking about that. And she just talked in front of the crowd, thanked you, ended the speech with always and forever. And it was one of the greatest experience, like, that I've ever been through. Like, it was great. I got to meet her and it was awesome. After, you know, that, we went and watched the premiere. The premiere was great. I loved the episode. Um, I can talk about it a little bit, I guess I can tell you. Um, I really liked the dynamic between, um, Clark and Hope and, uh, Malibor. Um, I don't really like the idea of them being more than enemies I guess you can say like friends I just don't like to see it relationship definitely don't like to see it um and but I really like the way that the that Nick and um, Danielle delivered while they're in Malivore especially Danielle Danielle did an incredible job just throughout this entire episode um the whole thing with Josie and Alaric in the Ascendant I'm really glad that Alaric brought up the fact that Kai is in a prison world and that Josie was the one who was like, okay, I'm going to give my dad back this ascendant because, you know, this person killed my mom. He's the reason why my mom is not here. And I really like the fact that Julie Pleck wrote that into the first episode. And that was out of the air because that's one thing I was really looking forward to was the twins knowing why 
the Ascendant has nothing to do with the merge in a way. Because it doesn't. It's just a key to, you know, the prison world that Kai is in. And then I also really, really liked the scenes between Caleb and MG. And then the whole thing with MG's sister. Uh, and, you know, the way that, you know, he can he, Quincy, or uh, Quincy. Um, MG is really struggling to not be near his family. He's really struggling in that way. And you really see it. You do. You do. And he even's like, he's like, yeah, my family's bad, but I still miss him. It doesn't make me not miss him. And I really like how Caleb was like, you're my brother now. You're my family. Like, this is your family. Don't think about that family. Think about this family. And it was a great scene between, you know, them. And I really love the dynamic between Caleb and MG and, um... Chris and Quincy, they do a great job as well. Uh, let's talk about the bird in the room. Is that the right thing? Probably not. So, Josie and Landon throughout the episode, I really liked the growth that they had within becoming, you know, people who were just acquaintances and who barely spoke to each other, to friends, and then to a possible romance. Like Julie, or like Kaylee tweeted yesterday, she tweeted, I'll put the tweet up here. She tweeted basically, Julie called Landon and Josie a logical love. Because it's logical for them to be together within a circumstance that they're in right now. With, you know, them both feeling like they're missing something and they don't know what it is. Especially with Landon drowning. It really, um, showed that there's a hole that he has. And maybe he thinks it's Raphael with Raphael being a wolf. Or he thinks it's something else because when he drowned, he saw hope. He saw her her eyes. She, he saw her earrings. She saw he saw her necklace. He, she even he even saw her lips. And then you hear he's even hearing like things like that she said to him. Like if you look in closely, you can hear Hope saying like I love you, Landon Kirby. So maybe that's the only thing. Like he knows that something's missing. And then the whole thing with Raphael is really turning him off. And Josie. Josie was really there for him like throughout the entire thing. Like you can see like they were friends. And it was logical for them to end up feeling something more than just friends because they're both going through shit. With Josie with the merge and, you know, Penelope leaving. And then you see Landon with Raphael and, you know, missing hope. It's just logical for them to end up together. And I think it plays a big part in Hope coming back because, you know, Hope did see them kiss. And, you know, the bus stop scene with, with Landon and Hope, which was my favorite scene next to the scene with, um... Uh, Aria and, and Kaylee at the lake when Landon drowns. That was a really good scene as well. But like you see, she's like, she's talking to his, his hologram. Which is basically her conscious telling, you know, her what she thinks Landon would say to her, but it's not actually him. And she's like, you know, he's going off about how he doesn't want her to leave until, you know, she tells him that she's back from the dead but he she technically didn't die and she's he's like well i would want to know that too and then you know she he's trying to pull she's like thinking that he's trying to pull something on her he's like like what's happening between you and josie but she can't be mad at them because they don't know who she is you know what i mean like and she won't until she tells them you know you really see a big impact or the start of an impact that Malibor has really had on Hope. Because, you know, when she asked Landon, she's like, are you happy? And he doesn't answer. That's not him saying that. That's her thinking this is what he's going to say. And then you say, is everyone, if she says, is everyone happier? She thinks everyone's happier because she's not there. But they don't know she exists. Zick exists. So how can they be happy or without her if they don't know she exists? You know what I mean? Um, but the episode overall was great. And the way that they ended it really confused me. Um, it looked like the monster looked like a Shrek type of monster or whatever. And then, you know, the whole thing with the symbol, the triad symbol and fire. And then Clark's like, I'm gonna kill all Michaels. I'm gonna sh Clark, you can stay in Malivore. I don't care. This is my story time for you guys. Um, thank you for tuning into this video. I am going to be getting back to reacting to Legacies this Thursday. Which, I mean, it's obviously going to be post Friday, but also I'm going to be reacting to Riverdale soon and Batwoman. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for letting me be able to get this experience. Um, I hope to go to Covington again. I really loved it there. Beautiful, beautiful state of Georgia. Um, but yeah, thank you for everyone who I met. Thank you to all the extras who took the time to talk to me. And thank you to Quincy and Julie for taking the time to take a picture with me. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, I'll see you guys later this week. And